Meet the MakerBot Replicator, a desktop 3D printer now available in South Africa for the first time, brought here by distributors Rectron, who've struck a deal with MakerBot, already a legend in the world of 3D printing. And with me in the studio, I have Bruce Bradford, who heads up printing at uh, Rectron, who's going to tell us a little bit about how they brought the devices in, how they convinced MakerBot to appoint them, and also how these devices work and what they expect the market to do with the de devices. Bruce, tell us about the range of devices that Rectron is bringing in from MakerBot. Sure, uh, Arthur, we've got five different printers in the range, uh, plus a 3D scanner. Um, and what's really interesting with the range, especially the fifth, fifth generation, is that even on the entry-level device, it's got just about all the features that the top-end device has got as well. So on this entry-level device, we've got an onboard camera, which is really useful. You can monitor it from your iPhone or from an iPad um, and see what's happening. So you can have your print in a different room and you can see what's going on. It's got USB, it's got Wi-Fi, um, and the bigger models, models have got Ethernet as well. So we've got a really dynamic range which can uh, meet all users, re all users' requirements, really. The question most people ask about 3D printing is, how does it work? So what it really does is we've got a spool of plastic filament at the back, which is a, a biodegradable, non-toxic filament, and that comes through to the extruder. The extruder heats up to about 215 degrees C, melts the plastic, and we lay it down one layer at a time, and then we build up from there. And if you think of an object, if you cut it into thousands of different horizontal slices, that's pretty much how a 3D printer works. So it lays down the bottom slice and then builds up from there. So where do people get the designs? Is there a template library? Is it an international cloud of uh, templates? Or is Rectron providing one locally? What MakerBot have done is they've designed a whole ecosystem around the hardware itself. Uh, they've got a very good website called thingiverse.com where you can go on and at the moment they've got about 600, 700,000 different designs which are free to download. They've also got their own print studio, their own digital store where you can go on and for a nominal amount you can buy a design at a relatively cheap price and then you print that as many times as you require. And is it mostly toys? Not at all. So a lot of it is for educational purposes. A lot of it just useful gadgets, which you might want to, to do. Um, and then scientific things, medical, um, engineering, all sorts of, of different gadgets. Well, to give you an idea of uh, what's going to come out of this machine, we are seeing the beginnings of this toy. It's an elephant with uh, movable legs. It's going to take about eight hours to print on this uh, machine. More elaborate objects like a spanner, so you can make other devices with this, or this is a prosthetic hand, and this was actually the prototype of the robo hand that there has been a lot of fuss about with people in Johannesburg, in fact, having them fitted after they've lost uh, their limbs. And this is just the beginning of an evolution of 3D printing into environments where even aircraft parts are going to be manufactured on very large versions of uh, these devices. The future of uh, 3D printing is one that will involve toys, it will involve medicine, it will involve the most serious and the most trivial applications. The only drawback is the price. These two babies cost between 18,000 Rand for the mini and uh, 35,000 Rand for the desktop uh, replicator. So it's for the serious builder and designer at this stage.